Hello. Uh, today we're going to demonstrate how to use Microsoft's Web API. Uh, we'll create a simple widget class and some widget objects, and uh, I'll then create a Web API controller. Um, we'll then create client code, which will uh, retrieve the widget objects by calling the server through a Web API. So let's get started. Um, let's see, the first thing we'll do is we'll go ahead and create our project. And with uh, uh, Visual Studio 2012, um, there have been some improvements. I mean, 2013, excuse me. Um, th they've improved the method of creating projects. And uh, it's, it's much simpler. You can use Visual Studio 2012 if you like. It'll, it it's, uh, should be very similar. Um, so we're going to go ahead and create our project. Let's just call this Simple Web API Example. Go ahead and say OK. We're going to create an empty project, an empty Web API project, because we're going to fill in our own code. Uh, we're not going to do unit testing for this simple example. We're not going to do any authentication. So we'll let that get going. Well, that was fast. Um, the first thing we'll do then, uh, once we have our project here, is we'll go ahead and create our model. And it's just going to be a very simple model here. Um, we're going to add a class. And we'll go to code class, and we'll call this guy widget. And we've got our code all ready to go here to speed things up. So you don't have to watch me type. So, oh, I've got my code right here, okay. So, all the properties of the widget class. I've got ID, name, category, and price. Okay, pretty simple. So, the next thing we'll do is create a, a controller. Uh, go ahead and create a controller here, and we're going to create a Web API 2 controller, empty, because we'll be filling it in ourselves. And we're going to call this widgets controller. Go ahead and create that. And we're going to go ahead and um, fill in this controller and I'll talk about what we're going to what we're doing here once I get it plugged in. So here we go. So let's see. Um, I've got to add um, using here, let's see, um, uh, let me go ahead and build and then IntelliSense will let me, um, huh, uh, why is that? Oh, I know, I haven't got to use widgets. Oh yeah, simple web API example and models. Okay, here we go. So um, we're just going to go with a real simple fixed array here for our um, uh, data. So what we'll do is we'll start, um, we're going to keep this really simple. We'll just create a fixed array of widgets in the controller class. You typically wouldn't want to do this in a real program. Instead, you'd load and save your data to a database. But for our purposes, a simple array will work just fine. And next, you'll see we've got um, well, first I want to point out that the controller inherits from um, the API controller here. Um, <clears throat> so it's not a regular controller, it's an API controller. Um, we've got two methods here, get all widgets, which will return all our widgets. We'll call that initially from the client, and then subsequent to that we'll uh, choose one particular record and we'll pass in the ID and we'll call get widget in that case and we'll just return the one widget if we're able to find it and here we have our lambda statement to um, pick out that particular widget based on the ID so it's really uh, pretty simple we'll go ahead and uh, build that um, the final thing we want to do in the code here is we want to go ahead and create um, an HTML file, an HTML page here. We'll go ahead and do that and we'll call this, uh, let's see, let go back here. Oh, 
I'm sorry, add existing, add a new item, and we're going to go to general, um, Why am I not seeing an HTML? Oh, web. Okay, of course. Web HTML. And we'll go ahead and call this guy index HTML. We'll add that. Now, in this particular case, I'm going to go ahead and just copy the code in. Um, so you don't have to wait for me to type it all in. I'm just going to replace that with this code here. And I'll go over it. Um, at the top here, we just have a regular... Um, HTML5 doc tag. We have um, this first div is going to show all our widgets. Um, so we've got an ID here of widgets in an unordered list. And then below here, the second div will allow us to search for a specific ID. And we've got a text uh, field here which has widget ID where you'll enter the widget ID. And then a search uh, button which will call find by ID which we'll scroll down and um, this will get the ID that you've entered and we'll make a Ajax call using jQuery here and uh, we'll be calling, we'll be using the URI that's defined up here, API widgets and then we're going to add a forward slash in the actual ID to make a call for that individual widget but before we get there uh, when the page loads here, when the, doc, when the DOM is ready, what we're going to see is that this uh, AJAX will fire off and it will call and get all. It'll be using this URI here, which just has uh, widgets. It's not specifying a specific widget. And so it'll get all the widgets and display them in the widgets uh, ID up here in this unordered list. So that's, that's what will happen. Um, we'll go ahead and run it now and show you. And what I'll do here is I'll bring up, um, okay, well, it's already running, but I want to bring up tools so we can actually see what's going on here. I'll go ahead and refresh. So we, we brought down the index HTML and then, you know, uh, this pay, the JavaScript ran, this document ready came up, and this Ajax call was fired, and that's this one right here and you'll see what we got back from the server was uh, the JSON that represented all the objects, um, all three of them, and they were displayed right up here. So now what we're going to do is go ahead and put in an ID. So we'll, we'll go ahead and put in one and we'll click search and you see we've got another request that just went out and uh, it's to localhost on our port. Uh, and uh, it you know, it's API widgets and slash one. This is uh, ID of one. We can go ahead and change it to two, and you'll see it updates two. Um, now, what happens if we uh, use an index, say, like four? We've only got three items in our um, data. Uh, let's see. So we'll go ahead and put in four, and we should get an error. We do get an error turns a 404 because that item isn't there. So I think that pretty much covers what happened. Let me go back and um, show the uh, controller again. And we called both uh, get all widgets initially to return all the widgets and then subsequent to that we called get widget with a specific ID. Here we did first or default. We used our lambda expression here so we could pull out the particular um, widget we wanted and of course in that one case where uh, widget returned null then we return not found uh, which is the 404 otherwise we go ahead and return the widget back so this shows how um, it's pretty easy to set up a web API and then using Ajax and jQuery it's really easy to call it from JavaScript um, and I think uh, I'll be using Web API quite a bit in the future. It's a very lightweight way to uh, retrieve data from the server and place it in a page and allowing your pages to be very responsive. Um, so that's it for now. I uh, hope you enjoyed this and we'll do more with the Web API in the future. Thanks.